Hello, my friends. Welcome to my video on obtaining and loading Landsat imagery in QGIS. So I'm going to show you how to download some Landsat data and get it into QGIS. Why even bother downloading the data at all? It's pretty old school. For you young people who are used to streaming everything, your music, your video, your data files, uh, us old school folks like to download the data, get it on our hard drive. A couple reasons for that. One is that um, it usually makes computation much, much faster if you're not streaming over the internet. And also you are able to interact more easily with the different bands and make the necessary calculations and things like that. So why Landsat? Landsat imagery is a great kind of workhorse imagery set. Um, this imagery has been being collected for 30 plus years, 40 plus years, eight different missions with a ninth scheduled to launch in 2021. Um, it has a great combination of temporal coverage, uh, reasonable spatial resolution, reasonable spectral resolution, um, and it's freely available. So it's, it's pretty good. So many of you are familiar, Landsat, uh, like many satellite imagery, is collected in multiple bands. These are uh, essentially replicate images of the same scene that are collected in different wavelengths of light. So you can see here, Landsat 8 actually has 11 different spectral bands. Here they are, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 2, 3, and 4 are in the visible. 5 is in the near infrared. And then 6, 7, 10, and 11 go further out into the infrared. Interestingly, these have different pixel sizes. A lot of these uh, visibles are in, I believe, 30 meters still. This panchromatic band is in 15 meters. This collects light across the entire visible. And then these infrareds uh, are 60 or maybe 90 meters. So we're going to have 11 different files when we get this Landsat downloaded. And we're also going to see, when we download it, that uh, at least USGS has divided Landsat into two tiers based on quality. Tier 1 is imagery that has been really well radiometrically calibrated, so the sensor has been really well calibrated, and it's also been really nicely orthorectified and spatially registered. So everything's perfect. Tier 2 uh, has really good radiometric corrections, but uh, lesser quality spatial registration, essentially. So the, the exact location of the pixels isn't known quite as well, which can be a limitation if you're doing, for example, a lot of uh, time series analysis or change detection. OK, so where are we going to get data? Um, wow, these two websites have great summaries of all of the open data por portals. I won't go through them, but Google it or check these sites. You'll find lots of places to get data. In this video and in this class, if you're a student, we're going to use USGS Earth Explorer a lot, which has Landsat imagery, but it's also going to have a lot of other data that's, that's handy for us. So let's go right into that Earth Explorer window here. Uh, you can Google it or type in the address. Um, you are going to need to make an account and log in. It'll let you search, but it won't let you download until you're logged in. So you'll need to make a, an Earth Explorer account, and that's free. So once you're logged in, um, we can start our search. Uh, you can set your search criteria over here. Lots of different things you can put in there. What I usually do is I just usually use the map window to limit my spatial search. And in this case, we're going to look for an image of Lake Champlain which is in Vermont. One trick for Landsat is you, you usually want to maybe set your search area kind of small because a lot of the tiles overlap and uh, so on and so forth. So I'm just going to zoom in on any old part of Lake Champlain basically here. I'm going to go pretty far in though. And then I'm going to set over here, uh, I'm going to say use map to define my coordinates. You can also add them or use a predefined area. Um, you can upload a KML or a shape file. So there's lots of ways you can specify your, your search area. You can also set a limit on cloud cover. I'm not going to do that uh, quite yet. 
So next, I'm going to go into data sets up top here. And I'm going to choose Landsat 8. And notice this is level, it's level 1, which means it's collected. Um, also means it's collection 1, which I believe means it is that, it's that top tier data. It's that tier 1 data. Uh, so we're going to search that. And we'll go down to the bottom. OK, and we'll look for our results. It'll take just a second. OK, so it pops up. Cool thing, Earth Explorer gives you these little previews over here. And so it only came up with four images. I, didn't, I also did not set a time constraint, which you can do. But Landsat 8 hasn't been around too long, so I'm not too worried. I can see in the preview this one looks really nice. It is already uh, has very few clouds. Looks like it's from July 6, 2020. So it's a nice summer image, should show us the vegetation. One cool thing, if you, if you have a lot of stuff, you can click this footprint button, and it will show you the actual footprint of that image. Um, and sometimes you'll have a lot of images, so that's pretty helpful. OK, so to download it, we're just going to click on this little button here. Again, you need to be logged in. And notice it's giving us lots of options. Um, a couple of these, a lot of these options are essentially just to get kind of like JPEGs, small files that have kind of like a cool, you know, photo quality export of the Landsat image. But if you want the real data, you got to go to this meaty one down here. Notice it's 878 megabytes. It's almost a gigabyte. It's gigantic. All these other things are much smaller. So look for the biggest one. It's in GeoTIFF format, which we like to work in. Um, now, if you don't have a gigabyte of space on your hard drive, then you better go clear, some, <laughs> better go uh, tr delete all your Taylor Swift albums, make a little room. So I click download. My computer should hopefully prompt me for where I want to download it. And actually, truthfully, getting ready for the video, I already did download it. So I'm just going to skip this step. And you just have to magically pretend that you watched me download it onto my desktop. I put it into my GL322 folder, labs. I created a folder for lab two, tutorial, and raster. And so what I've got down here now is a doubly zipped, is, is a zipped tarball. So this file has been compressed twice which means we're actually going to have to extract it twice. So if I right click on it, Windows should give me an option to, actually, this is interesting. Windows does not have a built-in option to extract this. So you may need to install the free software 7-zip. So you may need to take a break now from the video. Go install 7-zip. And then when you go to right click on this, it should show you uh, the options to um, extract the files. So we'll extract the files. I'm, I'm going to, again, delete this outer file folder and just have it extract right into the folder. And we'll pause the video as it does so. OK, so it did that extraction. So still highlighted here is the original file that I downloaded. That was 900 megabytes. Now that I've extracted it, the first round, it's 1.8 gigabytes. This thing is monstrous. And I need to actually unpack it one more time. So I'm going to right click. Again, I guess use 7-zip. You can also use this shortcut, Extract, here. And it won't prompt you to build another folder or anything like that. OK, there it is, all of these uh, crazy, meaty files. So um, now that I've extracted, uh, this. Here's what we see. Notice we see the root name of the Landsat image. I don't know what all of these things mean, but LC08 is basically Landsat 8. This is level 1 TP. That's the quality of the data product that you've got, the level it's been pre-processed to. 014 is the path, the satellite path. 029 is the row. The date is 2020, July 6th. And I think this might be the date it was processed and released. So uh, that's it. And then this B1 right here, that stands for band 1. 
As we go down the line, it's band 2, band 3, and so on, all the way to band 11. Couple quick, so you have all the bands here. Couple quick things to note. Notice that band 8 is much larger. It is 470 megabytes. Reason is that is the 15 meter panchromatic band. It has a 15 meter pixel size. Whereas the other bands, like band 1 and 2, have a 30 meter pixel size. So as a result, they're about one quarter the uh, file size. Also take a look here. This is actually the metadata file. This is a text file you can open. Uh, didn't open very well there, but it has all the information you'll need to display and interpret a Landsat image. And uh, quite many GIS softwares like QGIS will read this automatically. But if you ever need that information, it's going to be in that metadata text file. It's a very important file. So one other thing before we go further, rather than have two and a half gigs of stuff sitting on our desktop, I'm going to highlight both of these uh, zipped files that we just used to extract. I'm going to right click and just delete those. And then you want to make sure to empty your trash and actually expunge that two and a half gigabytes off of your computer so it doesn't slow you down. Okay, so now let's get these bands into QGIS so we can work with them. So I'm going to go to QGIS. Um, We're going to use a tool that is called uh, Build a Virtual Raster. So that's going to be under Raster, off the menu here, Miscellaneous, Build Virtual Raster. And that opens up, so it wants to know our input layers. And essentially what we're going to do here is stack all these bands into a single kind of virtual file so that we have access to them pretty easily and that they don't like sh each show up as an individual band in our layer list. Okay, so I'm going to go to input layers. Uh, one cool thing is instead of adding files, you can actually add a whole directory, which is pretty cool. So here I am in my lab2 folder. It's not showing me the files in there, but I know they're in there. So I'm just going to highlight the raster folder where, I just, where we just unzipped everything. So wherever you just unzipped all those files, that's where you want to be. That, it's that folder you want to pick. Select the folder. It shows me all the files that, that I could stack together. Um, I'm going to actually uncheck the metadata and this BQA. So any, any of the, this text file, this BQA, and this, this Angular information. So I'm going to uncheck those three. Then I'm going to actually, I don't know if this is critical, but I'm going to actually put them in order. So I'm going to put B10 down there and B11 down here. So now I have band 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 all in order. They're all checked over here. And I've unchecked the other kind of metadata or quality files. And now I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to set the resolution to be highest, just to make sure that we don't lose any, do any downsampling or anything like that. Uh, place each input file into a separate band. I definitely want to do that. Uh, don't need to worry about projection differences. And I don't think we'll be resampling or anything like that. And in terms of the file name here, I'm just going to save it to a temporary file for now. Because if you save it as a permanent file, you may end up again with lots of stuff clogging up your hard drive. All right, let's hit Run and see how it does. So it finished very quickly. So I'll hit close. And here is the Landsat image. Here's Lake Champlain. Looks like we are in business. OK, so a couple things you might notice. One is we can't see the image very well. It's kind of washed out. And we're going to try to correct that with a contrast stretch. And there'll be more about that in a future video. The other is that uh, the image is currently false color. Everything that you see that is blue here or purple should probably be green, right? Those are probably forests in New England. So let's see if we can fix that. To do that, we're going to adjust the properties. So we're going to go right click on the virtual layer, go to properties. And what you can see here is that uh, this, so we're going to be on the symbology tab. The render type is multi-band color. 
and it has allowed us to assign a band to, to red, green, and blue. And, but what you'll notice, and if, if, you, if you know about Landsat or you look back at the slide, band one for Landsat uh, actually is in the blue, band two is in the green band, or green wavelengths, and band three is in the red. So uh, QGIS has switched it up a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to change blue to band one. So we're going to assign the band that was actually collected with blue light and be displayed as blue. For red, we're going to do the same. We're going to assign the band that was collected in red to actually be red. And we're going to hit apply and hopefully have something closer to a true color image. Looks like we do. And then the other thing we're going to want to do is try a contrast stretch. So right now we're doing a linear contrast stretch to the min max. And so let's try stretch and clip to min max. And then, so we're saying we do want to do some kind of clipped contrast stretch. And if we open this up, no change there. Let's, let's try a standard deviation. I like how that did make it a little bit darker. So let's hit OK and accept that for now. Zoom in, have a look at how we're doing. Not bad. I'm not sure why it still looks a little washed out, but we'll figure that out for the next video. So thanks so much for listening. In the next video, we'll show you how to clip a Landsat image and maybe a bit more about contrast stretch. Take care.